Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars and on this week's episode sponsored by Mauser Electronics and Borns, it's time to give you an update on the 200 mile an hour Tesla powered Porsche 928 project. Let's get into it. Now the key-minded amongst you may have noticed we have two Porsche 928s in the workshop at the moment. This one, which is mine, which is what we're going to be concentrating on today, but also this one, which is a customer's. So I'm going to be flitting between the two, just as a reference between the difference between my one and this one. So to get started, I'm going to give you a little bit of an update or a background, if you like, as to what we're doing on my one. Time for a summary on what we're trying to achieve. For those that haven't watched the previous episodes, and if not, why not? Click on the link above. But in the previous episode, we covered the weight loss on this and managed to get 740 kilos, that's a lot of weight, off this car as a starting base for what I want to achieve with it. So what do I want to achieve with it? Well, I kind of want to see if I can push this car to 200 miles an hour. Originally, this was one of the fastest normally aspirated cars you could buy back in the day. I think the top speed was something like 184 miles an hour. If I got that wrong, we'll correct it on the screen. But it was just a touch away from 200 miles an hour. And that's a fairly big milestone, especially back in the day when this car was available new. So I want to see, with electric power, can we push this car to 200 miles an hour? And to help me do that, as I say, we've dropped some weight off with carbon fiber panels, but as, as, as well as that, I wanna change some of the aesthetics and just give it a little bit of a modern twist. So I'll show you a little bit of what we've been up to in the past few weeks on that. For me, this is the iconic angle, if you like, of the 928. It's big bulbous rear end like a big bulbous rear end in. <laughs> on, a car, it. on a yeah. car, on a car. But this is actually not the same as what mine used to look like because this is not an S4. Mine is a 928 S4 and this is the earlier rear light sort of cluster if you like. On mine, it was a little bit more modern but still not modern enough. So this is one of the areas I wanted to change. So, you ready to see what I've done? Let's have a look. This is the light cluster, if you like, that used to be on my Porsche 928. But as I say, it's a little bit dated. So what we've done is, ta-da! We have managed to fit in a Porsche Macan rear light cluster. Um, it wasn't easy, um, but when I was researching what updates and what styling I wanted to get out of this Porsche 928. I came across a 928 online with, I think there's only one other guy that's done it, with a Porsche Macan rear light cluster, and it just looked nice. So I thought, how hard can it be? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think I'll do it again. <laughs> Very hard. <laughs> it wasn't easy to get all the lines, because of the, all the curvatures going on here, I mean, it, it looks as if that just fits in there, you know, and, the guys have done a very good job of fitting it in here, but it's not easy because the, the, the line here needs to come out more. In fact, you can see where the original line of the, uh, of the car is. Uh, from here around to there, it's kind of getting close, but then, yeah, so a lot of work. I mean, we had to bring the bumper out a little bit as well, but I'm very pleased with the result so far. Um, we're nearly finished with this now, so from there, that way is finished. From here, that way is done. Now we just need to fi uh, figure out now how to bring the boot further out because uh, the new um, surface of the boot is here. So we've got about two inches to make up there. It's whether or not we extend the boot that way or do we do something else. And then once we figure out that, we then got to bring this panel out that way. That's the easy bit, bringing that out that way. I mean, we're just going to cut it here, bring it, because this, this is just plastic. So I cut it along the top, force it then to come up and meet this line here. That's easy. But yeah, nearly there. But comments below. Do you like it? Hate it? What's your reckon, Tim? I like it. You like it? Yeah. But I'm quite interested in the fact that on the gold one we just looked at, I really like that style of lights. Yeah. I'm not keen on the style of lights you've taken 
off, mm, yeah. but I like the modern one. So that's probably my least favourite, the one you've got in that's your hand That's because there. you're a classic car guy, mate. Yeah. The, the older the light cluster, the better. But I think this, as far as the lines are concerned, really matches the, that sort of like bulbous rear of it the... It uh, does look like it was meant to be there, doesn't it? It does, yeah. yeah. You wait till it's finished, it looks spot on, mate. But this is not the only modifications or modification, as somebody's pointed out, of this car, because I've also been messing around with the front lights on it as well. So let's have a look at that. Now, before we get on to these front lights, I just want to have a chat with you about today's sponsor of this episode, Bourne's. Bourne's are a manufacturer and provider of electronic components and circuit protection devices which are prevalent in the automotive industry in things like battery management systems which you'll find in a pack like this. Bourne's components are helping designers to add safety, reliability and longer battery life to vehicle and industrial BMS applications. They offer custom and standard based power conversion components and their products meet the AEC Q200 which is a global standard for stress resistance that all passive electronic components must meet if they are intended for use within the automotive industry. Some of their products will already be very familiar to those in the automotive EV space, products like IGBTs, potentiometers, shunts and encoders. When we're electrifying a beautiful car like this Porsche 911 here, it gives us great confidence to know that those components from Bourne's meet that very stringent AEC Q200 standard for automotive grade components. And if you want to find out more information on Bourne's and their components, we'll put some links in the description and more information as well can be found at mauser.com and we'll put the link in the description there for you as well. So on that note, back to the episode. Another quintessential looking feature on the Porsche 928 is this front area here. I mean, this is the S2 obviously, mine's an S4, but the bonnet, the wings, the pop-up headlights are all exactly the same on this car and my car. The only thing that changes between the S2 and the S4 on the front is the bumper. So the uh, S4 has a more rounded bit here, it goes in there, and, but it still comes around there. So this light setup here is what I thought it's it's nice, it's very 928-ish, but it dates it. I mean, the whole pop-up headlights kind of date the car to the 1980s. Are you a fan of these or not? No. Yeah. I just think they look a bit awkward. The pop, like pop-ups on some cars that pop up the other way, yeah. they're okay where like it's a, smooth. Um, like a Porsche 914. So you can't yeah, see yeah, the lights yeah, yeah, yeah. and they pop up. Yes. But they're pop-up headlights. That me. almost looks not they're, quite right, doesn't it? They're like frog eyes, sort of yeah. like sprites, like, you know, yeah. they're popping up with their eyes sort of thing. So I get that there will be some 928 fanboys out there that these are quintessentially 928. Don't mess around with them. But sorry, guys, look away now because I've messed around with them. <laughs> so here we go. All you 928 fanboys are probably crying now because I've got rid of the pop-up headlights. So, where should we start? Let's start with the, the side light indicator uh, cluster. So, um, yeah, originally that was in there like that. And then it had an orange lens indicator on the side here, there as well. And I just thought, I'll get rid of that. And I'm going to go with, oh, what 911 was this off? Um, uh, Porsche guys help me out. Um, this used to be um, in the bumper of an air-cooled 911, can't remember which one, 80s, 90s, but essentially that is off a 911 and I've modified it a little bit to fit in that space there and also added um, a little bit of the clear lens off the previous light cluster and it fits in there a treat. So that's now going to be a brake duct uh, to help cool the brakes. Indicators are still staying, but um, that's now a tinted version. And we'll keep that as well, but we're going to tint that as well. And we'll probably, you know, uh, black that as well, matte black or something like that, not colour code it. So that's what I've done in this area here, side light wise. I may put some side lights here or there. I think there's an MOT rule about um, side lights needing to be a, a certain distance apart. 
Um, I don't know why I'm looking at Tim, he won't have a clue. So I was going to put them there, but I don't think we can. So I'm probably going to end up here, or maybe even here as well, don't know yet. Uh, so that's what I've done there. But, more importantly, that's what I've done here. Headlight wise, I've got rid of the pop-up headlights now. These are statics. Um, there's a cat's eye uh, Heller um, headlight system in there. So that's a headlight and dip. Um, and what we've got is this glass here. In fact, I can probably take it out carefully. It's not all in there yet. We're just mocking it up. This, do you know what this is off, Tim? No. He's looking blank, no, no idea. Blank, blankly at me. So what we've done is we've taken the glass off a VW split screen. Um, there's one outside, we'll get a quick um, uh, image. So this usually sits, uh, which way does it sit? That way? I can't remember now. I know it sits sideways, but it's either, there's some uh, um, pattern here. I can't remember if it's that way or that way, but this is the front glass off a VW split screen camper, American spec, and uh, this plastic here is off a, another Porsche, I can't remember which one we had on the shelf, but we've kind of bonded the two together to give us a, a point of reference to then mount it into the light cluster that I've made here. And it just slots in there perfectly. We've checked all of the beam on the floor and uh, high low beam etc whether or not we got good spread it's spot on so i'm really happy with the way that's sitting the only thing we, which we need to address now is um the the glass for the light if you like doesn't quite fill the the space enough so now we're in the middle of making this piece of metallic art to kind of go in here we need to trim this down a lot more to sit that in there which is making up the space in between the glass and the aluminium um, so that's kind of where we're at now so i'll take this away because it looks a bit weird with that on but there you go comments below i'm expecting it's going to be a bit marmite this one people are either going to love it or you've ruined it and I'm used to the ruined it. <laughs> it's not the first time, is it's it? It's not the first time I've heard the word ruined or sacrilege in my life. But there you go. So that's what I'm doing on the front as far as the aesthetics is concerned. Uh, we've modernised the rear lights with those Porsche McCann lights. I've got rid of the, what I think are dated pop-up headlights. I'm just going with these static um, projector beam headlights and the um, brake duct uh, intake here. So there you go. That's what I've done. Right, Tim thought he was having an early finish today because he thought, is that it? But no, it's not, because we've also done most of the fabrication on this car as well. And you were lucky you didn't hear all the groaning he did to get on the floor, <laughs> old man. Yeah, um, come on, get on with it. My legs are hurting. <laughs> right, so starting underneath here, motor's in. So we've done the uh, fabrication of the motor um, mount and frame uh, because the customer... Uh, 928 that's behind Tim there that's also had exactly the same frame uh, so we just did two and we've jigged it all up just in case we do more 928s in future anyway because the nine, uh, the large Tesla drive unit that's in this is exactly the same mount as the small Tesla drive unit that's in the other 928 and in case you're wondering why didn't we put a large one in that well because we're always you know governed by weight re restrictions if you like and this has had a huge diet to be able to fit things like large diesel drive unit and bigger battery pack with more of that in a minute whereas uh, the other one is all standard weight so carbon fiber 740 kilos of weight off this standard amount of weight off that so smaller battery pack smaller motor but when i say smaller motor a small rear tesla drive unit is still enough to be able to spin the wheels on that 928 don't worry about that Front battery pack wise, my battery pack and this battery pack look exactly the same. However, there are very distinct differences internally. So the whys and the wherefores I'll explain because this is essentially a copy of our 911 kit that's going in this 928, which is small Tesla drive unit and 64 kilowatt hour battery pack. But what's going in my 928 
I've got to be able to support a performance Tesla drive unit which can draw up to 1200 amps out of the battery and I need a battery pack that can support that. So instead of going with 64 kilowatt hours, I'm going with 82 kilowatt hour battery pack out of a VW ID4, which has two motors in, so that it can actually support that huge amp draw. While we're talking about the battery packs, I've laid out here the two battery types I'm talking about. So this is what sits within our normal Porsche 911 kit, and that's what's going in the gold 928. So there's 24 of these that go in the gold 928, and it's, what did I say, 64 kilowatt hours, but they, they don't have a very high C rating, uh, which means that you can't draw too much amps out of it continuously. So for that, I need to go to something that's more of a performance battery, if you like, yeah, that can cope with a thousand, twelve hundred amps for ten seconds, and that's this. This is the VW ID4 module. It's a 2P8S configuration. This is a 1P4S configuration, and there's going to be twelve of these going in my uh, my 928. So that is the big battery that we're going to be putting in. That's 82 kilowatt hours total. So I've got to find a home for 12 of these. And the plan is eight of them will go in the front battery box, which is what I've just shown you there. Um, and four will go in the rear battery box. And where do those four batteries sit? In here. Now I would have loved to have put the rear battery box underneath, but there simply isn't enough space. That big Tesla large drive unit takes up most of the space under there. I could have, it was, it was a compromise whichever way I went on this, um, because I could have put two batteries um, literally uh, the other side of the Tesla drive unit, but where the bumper, it just would have been too close to um, a crumble zone at the back there uh, and I could have put two in the tunnel here but it would have meant a lot of modification of the tunnel because it just wasn't wide enough and in the end we thought you know what simple solution is let's just put it in the boot it's not ideal I'm going to lose some boot space it's up a little bit high as well as far as handling is concerned but then do have quite a bit of weight underneath with the Tesla drive unit so yeah not overly happy with putting the battery box here but there's no other choice I'm afraid uh, so that's where it's going to go this is a mock-up actually the one we've got uh, sorted out is going to be an inch lower but still we're going to lose most of the boot but then again the rear seats pretty useless in a 928 anyway so if we do need to take any luggage we will have at least some space in the back seat area so that's it four batteries in here eight in the front, large Tesla drive unit underneath, and yeah, that has all been made fabrication-wise. It's nearly done, just one more thing to show you. So, last things, uh, on the side we've got gone for the teardrop mirrors, um, uh, because I just didn't like these square mirrors that are on a 928 normally, I think they, they look better on a, on a van if you ask me. So we've gone for the teardrop um, mirrors that just fit the curvature of the rest of the uh, car, and then down here, those batteries are going to be pretty pointless if we can't charge them up. So charge socket wise, the metalwork behind there is all ready. I just haven't got the socket actually bolted in, but that all fits in there nicely. So charge socket's in as well. And that's pretty much it really. So there we go. So styling's done, fabrication's done. Still loads more work to do though. So, I'm interested to read your comments below because now it's time for you to let us know what you think of these modifications. Do you like what we've done with the rear lights and the front lights here and the side lights, or these design changes, or do you think it's sacrilege? But just to give you some context, don't forget, this is my car, not a customer's car, and what I'm trying to achieve here is a modern interpretation of the 928. Uh, without going too far away from you know the core of the 928 if you like and you're not putting huge wide arches on or anything like that but it's a modern interpretation of a 928 and to see if we can break that 200 mile an hour speed barrier that i wish it had back in the day if you like so you know with that in mind comments below what do you think uh, so 
on that note, it just leaves us to thank our sponsors for today's episode, Mauser Electronics. Go to mauser.com for all your electronic components needs and to Bournes as well for sponsoring this episode. So, hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.